Let's talk about Haemophilus influenza infections. Here listed are the objectives for this lecture. Analyze factors that put the client at risk for infection of Haemophilus influenza type B or Hib. Assess the clinical manifestations of various Hib infections. Formulate individualized nursing care plan according to the client's needs. Prioritize nursing interventions. Analyze client's needs and provide appropriate patient education. Haemophilus influenza has various cellular forms, from cacobacilli to rods. This gram-negative rod may produce capsule, which greatly increases virulence. Among all types of Haemophilus influenza, type B is the invasive and primary pathogen for human. While it could affect people of all ages, Haemophilus influenza type B, or Hib, accounts as the major pathogen for young children. Haemophilus influenza type B is transmitted via respiratory droplets, but it can cause infections beyond pulmonary system. There are two different groups of infections induced by Hib. The first type of infection includes otitis media, sinusitis, epiglottitis, and bronchopneumonia. These infections result from Haemophilus influenza type B spreading from its colony along the anatomical tract to infect the respiratory system. The second type of infection results from the invasion of bacteria into the bloodstream. Traveling along the bloodstream, it localizes to distant sites. These infections affect body parts beyond respiratory system. Meningitis, septic arthritis, pericarditis, Infantile sepsis and cellulitis are a cost of Haemophilus influenza type B. The incubation period is not known, perhaps a few days. Its communicability starts from the onset of symptoms and lasts for three days. It is more prevalent in spring and summer seasons. People at risk are those who are not well immunized, especially infants and younger children. Certain populations are at increased risk, including African American, Alaskan, and Native Americans. People who have compromised immune system due to sickle cell disease, HIV infection, asplenia, or cancer treatment are also at risk. Usually, the story begins with a viral respiratory infection. The secondary bacterial infection of Haemophilus influenza type B follows. As the bacteria releases immunoglobulin A protease, the function of immunoglobulin A is interrupted. The bacteria then gets to colonize the mucosa layer of the respiratory tract. Haemophilus influenza infections are clinically significant because the bacteria are severely invasive and it can cause serious complications. Depending on the types of infections, complications varies. For example, Recurrent and chronic otitis media can lead to death. Medical diagnosis is pending on the presence of the bacteria in the culture. Specimen is collected from where the infection is. Blood culture is collected for sepsis. CSF is collected for culture for meningitis. Throat swab is collected if the patient has upper respiratory infection. Middle ear aspiration is performed for otitis media. In addition, drug sensitivity is also required because some strains have drug resistance. Early treatment is the key to prevent complication and promote desired prognosis. Medical treatments incorporate the following. IV antibiotics for 10 days. Dexamethasone to reduce cerebral edema if meningitis. Rifampin is prescribed for exposed children who are younger than age of 4 years with incomplete immunization schedule as a prophylactic treatment. The other prophylactic treatment is to vaccinate the children who are exposed. Scheduled vaccination has greatly reduced the epidemic infection of Hib. Infection of Haemophilus influenza type B is a reportable disease. Report to public health authority. Patient should be placed under droplet isolation until 24 hours after IV antibiotics initiated. Administered medications as prescribed. Third generation cephalosporin, such as ceftriaxone or cefotaxime, are given intravenously. 
Both ceftriaxone and cefotaxime are a choice of antibiotics for meningitis caused by Hib because of their potency against gram-negative bacteria and great penetration and distribution into CSF. Due to poor GI absorption, these medications are given intravenously or intramuscularly. The major concerns when using these medications is cross-sensitivity reaction towards penicillin. About 3 to 5 percent of patients develop cross-sensitivity reactions. Medical history of allergy should be collected before using cephalosporin. The common adverse effects include GI irritation, such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or pseudomembranous colitis. Hematologic side effects are agranulocytosis, thrombocytopenia, and transient neutropenia. Anaphylactic reaction and injection site irritations are also reported. Please include inpatient education to monitor and report adverse effects, such as irritation and injection site, loose stool, etc. Bactrim or ampicillin can be given orally to treat otitis media or other upper respiratory tract infection. Cortrimoxazole or Bactrim is a combination of two antimicrobials. This medication has a greater spectrum of effects comparing to a single sofa drug. In addition, it is less likely for a microorganism to develop drug resistance to the combination. This medication also crosses blood-brain barrier consistently. The most common adverse effects are nausea and vomiting. The worst adverse effects would be megaloblastic anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. These hematologic adverse effects can be fatal. When caring for patients using Bactrim, carefully monitor and report adverse effects. Folinic acid can reverse the hematologic side effects. Bactrim should be used with caution on patients who have G6PD deficiency. Dexamethasone is given if the patient has meningitis. This corticosteroid medication reduces cerebral edema, preventing neurological complications. Being a hormonal medication, the effect of dexamethasone is generalized to the entire systemic functions. The concerning adverse effects include fluid retention and electrolyte imbalances, circulatory effects, musculoskeletal effects, integumentary effects, endocrinal effects, GI effects, and so on. In addition, this medication can interact with many other drugs. When using corticosteroid medication, tapering dose before discontinuing it is important in order to prevent rebound inflammation and hypoglycemia. If the patient has a prolonged use of dexamethasone, abrupt withdrawal of the medication could be lethal. Antipyretics such as acetaminophen and ibuprofen are administered to provide comfort, maintain airway patency, and support respiration. Identify family members' needs for prophylactic medications and or vaccination. When provide patient education on usage of rifampin, warn the family that the urine color will turn orange. Provide support to the child and family members. In addition to the stated general care for Haemophilus influenza type B infection, also provide care according to the type of infections. Thank you for taking this lecture.